All right, man. This just might be a sweep. I have never seen a team play this good a defense on Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, and I've never seen Durant and Kyrie miss this many difficult shots. What the Celtics are doing on the defensive end has the Nets completely flustered, and I just don't think they can come back from it. Yes, we all know that talent matters in the playoffs. That's why organizations are so quick to trade young assets for developed stars. But coaching and defense matters too. And this series is just the epitome of that. And the Boston Celtics are showing everyone on the biggest stage. Not only are the Nets not scoring up to par, they're getting beat everywhere else. And that's why this series is 3-0 in Boston's favor. I saw a stat where it said the Celtics have outscored, out-rebounded, and out-assisted the Nets this series. And Tatum has been incredible on both ends of the floor, especially in Game 4. Now, Tatum is the fourth youngest player in NBA postseason history to record 35 points and five steals in the game since steals were first tracked in 1973 and 74. And then to have the Defensive Player of the Year in Marcus Smart, Al Horford, and Jalen Brown helping out on the defensive end, it's just too much for any team with just two primary shot makers to handle. And it's just too much for a team that hasn't played a lot together all season, with Kyrie missing most home games, Durant battling injuries, and James Harden getting traded. With that, their lack of chemistry has been on full display this series. After Game 3, it was clear tonight that Durant was prioritizing his passing. There was a play in that second half where Kyrie set a screen for Durant in the corner, and immediately Durant was double teamed. Instead of dribbling out, Durant threw the ball into the baseline where he anticipated Kyrie to run. But instead, Kyrie was doing as much as he could to finish his screen because he wanted to make sure Durant finally got a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And that miscommunication led to a turnover and the Celtics capitalized on the other end of the court with the score. New Celtics coach Ime Udoka basically stated that good defense forces teams not just to run plays, but to make plays. Meaning, stopping the opposing team's play and forcing them to be creative and isolate. And that hasn't been too far of what the Celtics have done to Brooklyn this series. They're physically wearing Kevin Durant down before he even catches the ball. There are plays when Durant is bumped by three different Celtics on his way to catch a pass. In the playoffs, the opposing team knows all of your plays, so the Celtics are just waiting in Durant's path and making him feel them. It doesn't matter who you are, that type of physicality is going to take a toll on your shot making. Because you're most likely off balance and you can feel some soreness from taking so many blows. And most of the time when Durant actually gets the ball, he's four feet behind the spot where he's used to working from. After game two, Durant said, they're playing two or three guys with me sometimes when I'm off the ball. Pretty much summing up the Celtics scheme against a longtime superstar. And because of the staggering defense, Durant and Irving combined to score less than Tatum in game three. Whatever set the Nets are trying to run, the Celtics are completely taking them out of it and forcing them to isolate. They're just making them attempt difficult shots. And Boston has the athleticism and length to stay in front of Brooklyn stars. There was a play in that fourth quarter where Marcus Smart was left on an island with Kyrie Irving. And no matter what Kyrie did, he couldn't create a comfortable amount of space. As he rose to shoot, Smart did enough to contest the shot, and Kyrie just missed it. But because I know that's a shot he normally makes, it just shows that the Celtics are knocking Kyrie and Durant out of rhythm. And the biggest problem with the Nets isn't necessarily on the offensive end. They just can't defend Tatum and Brown and the rest of the Celtics. Right after the play where Smart contested Irving, he scored a layup on the other end. But I don't want to just talk about the Celtics' defense or how bad the Nets are playing offensively. The Celtics are a long way away from when Marcus Smart said Tatum and Brown don't share the ball. In this series, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are both averaging more points than KD and Kyrie. And Smart, who was once just a defensive player, is helping out a lot on the offensive end with his improved three-point shooting. The one good thing the Nets can take from these past three games is they haven't been blown out yet. All of these games have come down to just a few possessions. Tatum had a game winner in game one. Jalen Brown and Pritchard had an outstanding fourth quarter in game two to win by seven. And game three was won by just six points. Throughout this series, the Celtics have bet on the Nets role players to take them down. And Bruce Brown, Seth Curry, and Andre Drummond have actually played pretty well. 
but they just can't outscore Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. So the only way for the Nets to get back into this series is for Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving to play like the most skilled duo in NBA history. If they can't, this just might be a sweep. Thanks for watching this video. If you made it this far, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, I have a podcast called Rip Jersey. Follow that, add it to your playlist, listen to it wherever you can. Thanks for watching again.